Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Diva, and today we're making one of my favorite patches I've ever made. This one is called ARP Mechanical Acid because it has an acid influence a little bit, but it's also a mechanical kind of computery vibe. And it's an ARP, so here we go. This is what it sounds like. Okay, so that one is a lot of fun. You can play that one for a long time and really never get bored. So, okay, let's get started with this guy over here. So we have an init preset. Let's right click and initialize this once again. And for this first one, let's go ahead and disable the external reverb because I think that makes a lot of difference, especially for this type of patch. And then for the onboard stuff, let's turn off these effects and start building this guy from scratch. So from an init preset, we're gonna be staying on the Moog oscillators. That's not really gonna be changing. However, we are really only using two oscillators, so the third one we can take out of the mix completely. The first one's 100, the second one is 78.5, so we can back this second guy off a little bit. So 78.5, something like that. And we're not gonna be using noise or feedback, so we can leave those alone. However, for our, uh, our second oscillator, we're gonna be going to a square wave, and this is gonna be at seven, so we can bring this to seven right there. And we're gonna be dropping this down to one octave. So we have something like that. Nothing too crazy. Okay, so moving on from here, we are using the MS20 filter, the VCF Byte, which is probably, I would, I would say my favorite filter in Deep. I just love the MS20 for some crazy reason, but this one we're gonna be using the second revision. So let's go ahead and scroll our mouse wheel, or you can click and select it from the list over there. So our cutoff is gonna be manually set at 70, so we can bring this down to about 70. And then our keyboard tracking is gonna be down. Our peak is gonna be 89, so we can bring this bad boy up. Something like that. Okay, and then for our envelope two modulation amount, this is going to be at 36. This is going to be modulating the cutoff with our envelope. So 36, I said, yeah, 36, okay. Now, for our envelopes, we're both gonna be using the analog, so we can go ahead and switch these out by scrolling up on our mouse wheel, or you can click and do the listing if you'd like. So our attack for the first one's gonna be one, the decay is gonna be 45, so we can bring this down by five to 45, and the sustain is gonna be all the way down, and then our release is going to be 20, which I believe is default, yep, that's fine. And then for the uh, second envelope, which is gonna be modulating our cutoff right according to this knob, the first one is gonna be one, and then we have 50, which is also default, sustains all the way down, and I don't believe we touched the release, so yeah, 20 for the release as well. Okay, so that's pretty much... That's kind of that core, that sound. Now, some of the interesting spots, if you haven't really used this effect before, we're gonna be putting a rotary on this for the only reason is turning this on and cranking the drive all the way to the top. So we kind of get that sound. So turn our ARP off for now, so. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty close. We can bring it up just a little bit, probably. We're just a little bit quieter. Okay. Pretty insane there, so we have that going, and we do have a delay after this and then an R, but we do need to talk a little bit about our trimmers panel because that is kind of important. So if you look here, we have eight voices and we're stacking them twice. So eight voices, that's fine. Let's stack this twice. Let's scroll up on our mouse wheel. Now, what's gonna be interesting is on our trimmers, the first one is gonna be zero, and then the second one is gonna be up one octave, so. So we have two voices, one of them being the regular pitch, and then the second voice is going to be the uh, an octave higher than that. So now we kind of want to move these across the stereo field because they're a little bit too centered. So now if we go to main and then under LFO2, let's go stack index, and this is our pan mod, right, modulating the pan. So we need to go to our main, and we're using our stack index, which is our stacks, right, these down over here, and we're turning this, uh, this pan mod to, to 82 value, I guess 82%, right? Because it goes to 100, so 82. So it's kind of interesting how this moves around the stereo field. It sounds really nice. I think we're at 82, I said 82. Did I move that? Yep, double click that back in case you did that as well. So we are at 82. Okay, so we're pretty much set here, I believe, for the most part. 
Yep, this all looks the same if we went back to trimmers. Yep, I don't think we're using any of these. Okay, we are good there. Are we changing the cutoff variance just a little bit? I think we might. Yes, so we did that a little bit here. So 11.50, let's bring this up here. And if you don't know, this is actually a very cool knob, right? So this is a variance from our cutoff, right? Sounds kind of obvious, but what's actually happening is that every single note that we hit, the cutoff position is not gonna be the exact same every single time. The more we increase this knob, the greater that variance is gonna be, which makes things a little bit cooler, a little bit more randomized, which I kind of like bringing that knob up there. The envelope is 10. I believe the rest of these I didn't move. So yeah, you can move these up and then you can always click this button if you want to reset the uh, the seed or the randomness for all the different voices. Okay. So I think we're in a good spot. Sounds pretty much identical at this point. So now we need to add our last effects down here and this is going to be a delay too. Let's turn this bad boy on and let's see what we're doing here. So. Our dry, I don't think we changed too much of this there, right? Did we? So our dry is 100. Yep. Wait. Yes, 100. Center volume, 27. So let's bring this up to 27 because we are using some center stuff. So 27. And then we have our side volume at 20, which is default. And then our high pass, 18.5. So bring this up. We don't want that low end really to kind of build up on us. And then our left is going to be 2, 4, and 2, 2, 4, and 2. Bring this down a little bit like that. And then our wow is going to be at 50, which I believe is default again. Feedback, 25. Yep. And then our low pass, we're using 91. So bring this down to 91. Okay. Cool. You love how those delays sound, right? You, you, you kind of hear really the left and the center stuff. Kind of differentiate between them. Okay, so last thing we have to do inside the synthesizer itself is start adding our ARP. So we go back over here to our main page by clicking main, right? And then our clock is gonna be one over 16. So scroll this downwards to 116 or select it from the list there. And then we are gonna be on down. So bring this to down and let's turn this on. And then really, I, I really like actually doing two octaves for most of my patches. I think it's kind of cool. It makes it sound a little bit, I guess, more interesting, I suppose. Cover more ground, right? Change that to two and this is what we have. So we get that mechanical feeling. We kind of get a little bit of the acid -y stuff as well. So we have that. And now one of the, the icing on the cake is going to be a Valhalla Vintage Verb. And specifically, it's going to be this new algorithm, which is going to be the Chamber 1979, which sounds so good. It's just, it's mind blowing. It's fun to really put this through anything. I think Diva pairs very, very well with this reverb, especially on this mode here. Okay. So that being said, we are cutting a little bit of the low end because we don't want that to build up too much. So for this guy, we're actually routing it pretty significantly high. So we're going to, was it 70 something percent on our send? But man, listen to that. I'm so going to overdo this reverb and everything I do in my life. But anyway, with that being said, let's take a listen to this uh, this patch with the backing track again and see how, how close we got. much fun to play my goodness okay so one last thing before we let you go here because we're pretty much done at this point if you want to make this patch a little bit more expressive i kind of do recommend on the second envelope that is right because we're modulating the cutoff with the second envelope is to maybe bring up the velocity just a little bit or really however much you want so that way you can really hit the keys a little bit harder so for example it's kind of hard and then the filter is a little bit more closed so you kind of get a little bit more variance based on the velocity right so that might be kind of fun let's check that out a little bit
Yeah, I think I would prefer with the velocity. And I swear I keep, I keep hearing almost like a growl in the uh, in the signal or maybe like a voice or something. Or I'm just going crazy. But anyway, if <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you like this patch, if you want to get it for free, there's a link in the video description below. Definitely the reverb makes a huge difference and especially this reverb as well. So if you don't have it, I highly recommend to get it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. It's like it's smooth and it's also aggressive at the same time. Oh, I love that. Anyway, so yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.